Well, 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 that is Azar Anwal telling us how you can get onto the Safari Rally. Now, it is your fan favorite segment, the fan zone, where we discuss everything that has been happening in the world of sports. And I'm joined by People Daily sports journalist Barry Silla here in studio with us. Barry, welcome to the touchline here on the fan zone. How has your week been sports wise? Uh, my week has been really good. I've been now. From the other day, I've been following up on um, sports uh, in Doha race. Yeah, yeah. And also, we are following up on. Uh, yeah, switch, yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. We're also okay. following up on um, issues around uh, the Berlin Marathon. Berlin that Marathon. In the weekend. That's really yeah. big because yeah. some people yeah. are looking at the, the, the world record being broken. Yeah. Uh, but uh, generally, it's been local. We're looking at how the girls in volleyball are struggling in, in the World Cup, uh, 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 Malkia strikers, mm -hmm. and also, of course, looking at football issues, uh, yeah. domestic in terms of NSL and KPL. Yes. Yeah. Big one uh, that has been happening tomorrow, Berlin Marathon. Eliud Kipchoge is not going to be there, but we have got our own Gladys Cherono mm -hmm. for the women's race. Mm -hmm. Can she defend her title? Yeah, looking at the, the course, and I think she's very familiar with the course and uh, and the opponents as well. I think uh, Cherone is definitely in the in the in the offing to to, to go and defend, uh, but yeah. also not only defend, maybe break her break her own, her record. own record. You know, yeah. there's something sweet, and of course, there's the, the lucrative element of money yes. when you break your own record. So Cherone will be definitely out there to 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 to, to show us what she's made of. Yeah. But I think at the back of her mind, she'll be looking at the Ethiopians. I think the Dibabas yes. will also be there mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, she's able to, to look at winning but also defend yeah. from the back. Yes. Yeah. Big one for us. Eliud Kipchoge will not actually be in Berlin, but is preparing for Enneos that will be happening in Vienna, Austria. Mm. Yeah. In your own assessment, mm -hmm. will he be able to make that sub two hour? come next month listen if there are people yeah. I, i've seen who are so determined and committed is this one of them is this guy uh yeah. Kipchoge. Mm -hmm. uh he's he's, he's 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 more than a marathon he's an icon yeah. he's, he's i think uh to me he's a legend mm -hmm. so for him to go for the sub two meaning is very confident and 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 he's, he has belief in his ability and in himself it's not about the age it's not about the terrain he has worked so hard over the years and i think for him sub two if it comes yeah. It will just prove to the world how good he actually is. Yeah, yeah. Mm. how good he is. And make a record that will take a very long time to be actually to break when it comes to athletics. Doha is happening also, the 2019 World Championships are happening in Doha, Qatar. And Kenya is the first country actually to win gold. Our very own Ruth Chepngetich won the gold in marathon in 2 hours, 32 minutes and 43 seconds. Away from the gold medal that we won, yes. the weather conditions are seem to be now the biggest thing yeah. that is happening in Qatar. Yeah, I think this is the biggest talking point and yeah. people had even been warned earlier uh, yeah. uh, that how athletes should have to be protected and taken care of. Yeah. Remember, Qatar in two years' time will also be hosting a World, World Cup football. Cup, yeah. So, I don't know, maybe they should have considered uh, maybe host, uh, playing uh, like what happened in African Cup of Nations hosting these uh, races in the night. Yeah. Uh, because as it is now, some people have already suffered almost what you call heat stroke. Yeah. You remember yesterday's race, I think the 800 meter, 1500 meter race in the men's side where one of the athletes, I think, almost collapsed. We, we have had more than 28 athletes pulling out of their events yeah. because of the weather conditions. I mean, look at that. So yeah. IWF should have, should I think have, have, have considered some of these things before yeah. uh, maybe looking putting into timings mm. maybe put them early in the morning or late in the night so yeah. that they at least do not suffer because it also affects their health apart yeah. from affecting their performance out there because you can see the stadium itself Kalef, there is really uh, they say it's a cooling it's a cooling system made stadium mm. but it's not actually up to that now you can see ice already on the tabs there yeah. people immersing themselves in ice to try and cool the body yeah. but at the end of the day it's not working there kenyans we have been having this advantage of running in high altitude our advantage is that we yeah. practice in a high altitude area so when we go to these championships we are actually made for this championship is this climate also going to test us because now even if we practice on high altitude and we have not had uh, any of our athletes pulling out. Mm. It seems that we are good to go even at this championship. I think it's a gamble because, like you said rightly, we are used mm. to the high altitude. Most of mm. our athletes train, let's say, in, in high altitude areas like, like Iten, for example. Yes. 
but then i think also it it, it boils down to 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 assessing in 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 beforehand you know very well like we're going to race in these conditions and everything yeah proper countries like remember the the argument the other time when people were saying arambe stars shouldn't have gone to france, france. instead they should have gone to dubai yeah. because of the weather yeah. similarity of weather mm-hmm. and i think what if we had planned properly ak and everybody else had planned properly and government mm-hmm. probably we should have taken uh, somewhere our our at least familiarize with the terrain let's say in dubai uh-huh. somewhere yes. in the middle east yeah. for a couple of days before you know going because down our there because camp is majorly at home at more home. so for athletes yes no yeah. because of i think uh, financial issues so yeah. uh, i think uh, we will struggle and push like japan teach struggle and pushed yeah uh, but it's going to be a struggle i remember some people yeah. are used to this terrain this weather yeah but for us uh, we will we will push to the end but at the end of the day we will uh, really have struggled yes well it's a big one for us there but the world athletics championships are happening in doha qatar and today is day two and we'll be bringing you all the highlights in everything that is happening in the world championships in doha qatar many things are happening here in the country but also Another big event that is happening in Japan away from the Rugby World Cup that is happening it is also a volleyball the Malikia strikers that are actually not living up to the mark yeah of being an African champion heading on to the World Cup Listen uh, uh, a lot was expected from Paul Bitok when he came he remember he's trained yeah. uh, Rwanda for a long time he's yes. played for the national team he's quite got some experience But what people forgot is that the World Cup is a different ball game and the World Cup uh, and I think our team is kind of balanced you have young players and, yes. and the old and and quite a mix I think that's what our coach was testing yeah. but the caliber of teams we play in the World Cup in look at world. Japan yes. Dominican Republic mm. uh, China yeah. the world the world defending champions these are mm. these are high level teams who uh, play all year round and yeah. have high level tournaments and mm. good infrastructure and, and good investment yeah. so for Kenya uh for the kenyan fans maybe it was too high expectations what we should be we should be grateful for for be talk and the girls is that in in between the sets at yeah. least we were managing to score at least 15 12 uh-huh. good yes. good good marks yeah. and and that means that at least we are managing to 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 push we are not really being uh, thrashed as per se it's a pure learning process yeah. for us because when you find that our league doesn't go all year around yes. our league usually is off for most of the time and also these ladies usually are called for national events yes. when they are coming up to it it is high time that we change our league format to conform to the FIVB calendar absolutely and yes. also encourage more teams to play i don't think we have so many teams in the high yeah. <laughs> high uh, in the top league yeah. where by you see they usually do rotational uh, mm. stuff like they go mm. to Busia or Bungoma or Eldoret mm. because there are few after two months then they go somewhere else and the six or seven teams yeah. what we need is top level teams uh, to to participate in the in a well structured league uh-huh. so that we are able to develop players over time what needs to happen also is consistency playing every time yeah and and getting familiar raised with the, the 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 modern way of of volleyball yeah yes well big one for us there that we are in the actually volleyball world cup and we are not performing we lost our game this morning against russia and we are going to play against cameroon in our last game but doesn't it worry you that we have not even won one set even if we are scoring in the set <laughs> yeah that's 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 quite the challenge i think yeah. I, i hope to and pray that uh, what we did against cameroon here now we, we must do something uh, yeah. against cameroon in in that leg in uh, that's yeah. happening in japan but yeah. also yeah. like i said earlier uh, uh, maybe some of these teams uh, they 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 know when to defend and attack uh-huh. in the, in yes. the middle of a game yeah. uh, then they expose our weaknesses in between yeah. uh, because maybe we go full throttle and and fail to know how to de- how to how to defend maybe when you're leading yeah. so for example if 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 the other team won 25 12 yeah. they will know when to defend and when, yeah. to attack. when to attack so they know what they lose some points but they'll try and outscore you because yeah. they'll look for your loopholes maybe that's what probably the girls need to know and we talk still need to know when to defend and when to when attack. To attack. Yeah. Big one there for the Malikia strikers who are in Qatar. It is a big weekend when it comes to football. We have got the Madrid derby that will be happening at Wanda Metropolitano between Atletico Madrid versus Real Madrid. Yeah. We have also got Monday night football, Manchester United versus Arsenal. But before we head international, we have got to look at what is happening here locally. And a big news that is coming in, Gormeya might have been inking to signing a deal with the Carroche Breweries. Mm. What are your sources telling you? 
what is the deal structure like so far yeah from what i hear on the, the pulse on the ground is that it's uh it's just to cut off for the the the, the, the return leg of the CAF champions league against usm alja uh, it is said that it's about 1 million shillings. Uh, mm -hmm. I think 600,000 will be catering for the players and funded for logistics. Mm -hmm. I remember Gormahi has been struggling lately. Uh, there was a time when I had there was a go slow in yeah. camp mm -hmm. because players had not been paid their allowances and bonuses and stuff like that. So I think this is a good, uh, uh, a good shot in the arm, uh, a yeah. welcome move by Keroche. And I, I believe God has been... Uh, if I'm not wrong, they have been uh, really trying to seduce or lure Keroche into yes. into into the camp, especially after Tuzo left. Yes. So maybe they're looking at a, a long-term partnership after tomorrow. Yeah. Let's see how it pans out because uh, with with what has happened with the betting companies going away, certainly Gormaya will need uh, will need uh, sponsorship. Yes. Now that is, that is the major part because now Keroche is actually coming in for the game tomorrow it's an international match tomorrow let's hope that they might go in to try and get into the long-term position but now another the breaking news that is coming in is that Bettina has gone ahead to fire all their employees meaning yeah. that they'll be moving away from the Ke kenyan market yeah. sport pesa we have also heard that they are also closing shop yes. they might moving away from the kenyan market mm. sports wise yes how will that impact us it's going to be grave, to be honest, uh, Robert, because, uh, I mean, we've, we've for a long time, uh, the betting companies have really supported us. And a company like Sport Pesa, for example, has not only focused on football, but it focused on across the board, like yeah. even uh, uh, rugby, I think, yeah. and also boxing. Mm -hmm. So for them to finally... They were actually in rugby. Uh, yeah. They were in boxing. Yeah. They were in safari rally. Safari rally, yes. And they were in football. Yeah. Yeah. So for them to pull out... Uh, they even also gave a kit to Malikia strikers some time back. Yeah. Yes, I mean, mm -hmm. they were actually playing the role. Mm -hmm. uh, they were like the second sports department, if you ask me. Yeah. They were doing the role that is actually supposed to be for sports fund, that mm -hmm. that uh, that uh, fund for, yeah. for, for running a sporting organization. Mm -hmm. But what you're asking is, 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 is quite important because... When Sportpesa leaves, yeah. for example, and, and the other betting companies leave, they don't only really vacate because the people were losing jobs. Yeah, uh, betting has closed shops. That means work, 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 guys have been laid off. Yeah, Sportpesa obviously guys will be laid off, mm -hmm. and and now it will trickle down to the clubs, like yes. for example the football clubs who will not be able to pay their players and the and and their staff. Yeah. So it means clubs and organizations need, like I said earlier in another program here, is that they have to think outside the box, look yeah, look for other sources. And by the way, if if they're going to try and, and, and think of, of, of approaching government, I think it's not a sustainable uh, route Mechanism. because yeah. I don't think, first of all, government is in the, is in the business of, of helping you guys. You, you need to be structurally in order. It and then it look for your own it's ways very out hard for government to come in let's say more so for club football yeah because you realize that gormaya if sport pesa as sport pesa closes their deal with gormaya yeah. they are going to be losing an amount up to 80 million per year yeah. fc leopards will be losing up to 60 million per year yeah. and that is going to be a very big impact for them but the, the the other question that we would like to understand will, will be the hostile yeah. regulations that yes, these yes, companies yes. are talking about. Yeah. What can they be? Because from the government mechanism is the taxman who says that you have not been remitting your taxes yes. considering to the amount of money mm -hmm. that you have been making. And also we have got also the other instance where it was that According to the government, it was the sports act or uh, the sports fund that mm. if you support a team or if you sponsor a team, mm. you are supposed to deduct that from the tax arrears yeah. that you are supposed to be giving from your own end. Mm. Is that hostile? Listen, I think th there is more than meets the eye here. Ah, because, yes. for example, if I believe they've been paying their taxes. Yeah. And uh, like uh, to be specific, a company like Sport Pesa, uh, I think two years ago they were they were fetted, yeah. were celebrated by KRA, the very same KRA, as among the best tax-paying organizations. Yes. To turn around and now say that uh, you're not meeting at the end of again, I think there's something else that is fishy that is not really adding up, and this may be prompted uh, Sport Pesa to move out. Yeah. Uh, because. Maybe there's some political games. I may not really understand the, the inner details, but mm -hmm. 
it it must have been the last resort it must have been the last a move uh, of uh, last nail on, in the coffin yeah to decide to move in a market that was very lucrative for them yeah. and a market that helped their csr uh, projects yeah uh, i think they even personally they felt it uh, yeah. apart from the the, the 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 element of losing revenue they had an attachment yeah. they already built uh, relationships so yeah. For them, it's it's a big loss. Their DNA as a company yes, was yes, yes. mad with yeah. the Kenyan people. Yes, so that even now, if for example, Sportfest is going to rely on markets like South Africa, Tanzania, and UK, their home will forever be Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so there has to be something else that prompted them. Yeah. And and maybe that's why I decided. I said last time, government through uh, betting control, uh, Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Sports, they need to sit down and maybe look for a long-lasting solution. Yeah so that betting companies may not struggle like this. Well, big story that is unfolding actually in the country. We'll be giving you more as we learn, as it unfolds, to tell you what is actually happening as these companies are leaving and closing shop here in the country. But we have also got two matches that will be happening this weekend on the international scene here in Africa. We have got Bandari playing today away to US Gudana in Tunisia. They already won 2-0 mm. here at home. Yeah. Give them an inking to go to Tunisia and try and make it to the next stage. Yeah. How do you think Bandari looks in that game? I like. I think uh, Bandari looks uh, to me a bit safe. Uh, what they need to do mm. is uh, just try and defend. Yeah. Uh, many people like attractive attacking football, but to play safe. Yeah. I think Bandari uh, should just go by uh, and, and play safe uh, and, and close the spaces and just frustrate their opponent. Yeah. You remember, uh, you know, playing against uh, North African teams is, 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 is very difficult, especially at their home, yeah. at their own home. But what makes this different is that they are actually two goals down. Yeah. If it would have been a totally uh, interesting affair if 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 you know they were the ones that are on the top but now yeah. bandari needs to go down and play calm and just if possible frustrate those guys if they're lucky you add one goal and just close it uh, yeah. all together and yeah. for gormaya tomorrow uh, i mean Go uh, is, 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 uh, i don't know gormaya um, i don't know if what has happened today uh, is a morale booster enough to 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 uh -huh, to, to yes. cover three goal deficit yeah i remember for them to get to the money bracket they need to beat uh, you say to score like three goals, three goals, or to be very safe, four goals, yeah. without conceding. Yeah. Uh, Gormay uh, has, has, has looked very vulnerable at the back. Mm -hmm. Nobody has really repressed Harun Shekava. Yeah. The partnership at the back, at the centre back, maybe Maurice Ojong from Western Steam, and now J Josh Onyango is not really clicking yet. And Maurice just came from injury recovery the other time. Philemon uh, is also injured. Philemon is out injured. Yeah. Uh, Shafiq is out injured. Uh, Momani is a bit. Uh, up and down yeah uh, so that is the weakest link for gormai and, and the goalkeeping department I'm, I'm 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 i'll be i'll be very interested to see yeah. who is going to pick steve Pollock uh, at, at the post is it going to be frederico diambo who has good experience is it going to be boniface afande onyango uh -huh. yeah or or watch uh, or or we'll stick to mapigano because yeah. mapigano i remember when i watched the highlights there were some erratic defensive the mistakes mistake. he couldn't control his defense and some of the goals were his own making so it will be interesting. It will be tricky for them to uh, to to come back, but uh, it, in football, anything is possible. Well, we have got three matches happening on the Kenya Premier League this afternoon: Kisumu All Stars mm -hmm. versus Western Steamer mm -hmm. in Kisumu, Ulinzi Stars versus Sony Sugar at Afra. Then we have got the Slam Boys Derby mm -hmm. between Karibange Sharks and Mathare United. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. we'll be having KCB versus Gormaya, Leopards versus Chemilil Sugar, and then Zuke Richo versus Wazito FC. Big matches that will be happening there. Mm -hmm. And there's one match that has come to an end on the National Super League. That is Nairobi City Stars defeating Northern Wanderers by six goals to nil. Those are kind of score lines that we do not expect <laughs> on the National Super League. I mean, yeah, uh, Super League is usually considered one of the toughest leagues in the country. Yeah. For you to concede six goals means something's very, very amiss. Uh, and, and you remember, Northern Wanderers, this team, is, is, is it came and took the, 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 the place of, of financially strapped uh, Eldoret Youth. Yeah. But apparently, in my view, it, mm -hmm. it seems to be really struggling and it's like, uh, maybe it, I might be a bit harsh, it, it didn't deserve that space. The sp the space in they in, in came six into. matches, yeah. it has zero points, not even a single draw. Uh -huh. It has a, a, a very a goal difference of, I think, minus 23, if I'm not wow. wrong. 
guys who have scored only six goals against mm. 23 scored against them or yeah. 25 uh, i mean uh, this team yes it's uh, granted it's still a young team building itself up but i think it was too soon for them to come to this league yes. yeah. yeah some of the other matches in the nsl this afternoon we have got migori youth versus ap bomet then administration police of bomet actually then vihiga united versus saint joseph talanta fc versus kenya police bidco united versus modern coast and then that, those are actually the matches that are going on and then Nairobi City Stars has already defeated Northern Wanderers by six goals. And on the Kenya Premier League front, I'm looking at the matches that are happening actually this afternoon and one team I have a problem with so far has got to be Wazito FC. Yeah. They haven't collected any three points. <laughs> can tomorrow be the time they can collect those points away to Zuccaricho? I believe if it's not tomorrow then I don't know when it is because uh, <laughs> yeah. there's been a bit of positive vibe coming in from even their chairman, yeah. their president and, and, and the camp has been buoyant but remember uh, Zuka Rich is not going to just stand and wait to be beaten. Yeah. So it's a stubborn team at home. Uh -huh. um, uh, last year or last season they struggled a bit, they almost got relegated. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I can tell you for free it's going to be an, an electric match. Uh, Wazito would like to bury it and get their first three points to, yeah. to stop the mamas and the noises. Uh -huh. uh, because in five matches there are four points uh, yeah. so it means something is is very very wrong yeah. with, and they with and with, with the, the kind of purchases they had the kind of top players maybe what's happening at wazito is it's probably a matter of uh, selection yeah. fielding of the best fielding best of. 11 because yeah. you have all the personnel yeah you got you bought the best mm -hmm. now the problem is maybe who to place where where Yes, big match that will become a big match actually that will with, uh, that has, is already under has got to be Tasca versus Sofa Park. I yeah, remember yeah, yeah. Tasca won against the Zuke Richo 2 1 mm. away and Sofa Park defeated Chemil mm. 2 4 nil yeah. actually. That has got to be one big clash for who to decide who is going to rival the likes of Gormaya for the title. Absolutely, I've always said uh, the likes of Tasca, Sofa Park, uh, Ulinzi mm. must step up. Yeah. Uh, the, the 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 idea that Gormaya can always be running away back back to back with the championship is not is not acceptable. I think yeah. they should make the league more interesting. And so, this game, uh, this is a game of former champions of Sofa Park and Tasca. Yeah. Uh, it is going to be interesting. Uh, the, the 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 play formations and who's who's going to go into attack mm -hmm. or who's going to try to keep the ball and and and, and play safe. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you can be sure the 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 the, 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 the Sofa Park has a free flowing attack. Tasca. A very fluid uh, midfield and attack. Mushiri yeah. is there, Blackberry is there, Timothy Otieno is there. So it's going to be interesting how Sofa Paka cops. But I, if if uh, my my crystal ball thinks uh, it should go end up in a draw, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Big one for there for the Kenya Premier League and the NSL matches that will be coming. We'll be giving you all the updates of those matches as they happen. But away from that, I know in the fan zone, everybody is expecting for us to talk about what is happening actually in Europe. And we'll be talking about that big matches that are coming your way actually this afternoon at 2.30. That game is actually underway between Sheffield United and Liverpool. But at 5 p.m. is where you get all the matches that will be happening. FC Bournemouth versus West Ham United, Aston Villa versus Burnley, Chelsea will be playing Brighton half, Crystal Palace versus Norwich City. Then a big one there will be Tottenham versus Southampton, and then Wolverhampton Wanderers versus Watford. At 7:30, we'll be getting Everton playing Man City. And then on Sunday, there will be one match between Leicester City versus Newcastle United. And then the big one on Monday night, and that will be Manchester United versus Arsenal. Before we talk about Manchester United and Arsenal, Jurgen Klopp made a very statement mm. during the week that he could like Steven Gerrard to replace him as a coach. And everybody was all over talking about it and mm. saying that, yeah, that is a good one. Do yeah. you think Gerard can be fit for Liverpool as a coach if he comes back? Yes, uh, Gerard is, is is a club legend definitely. Yeah, uh, and I would like to to maybe draw an analogy, like a comparison with if he comes, if at yeah. all he was to come, mm -hmm. he'd be like uh, Frank Lampard at Chelsea right now. Uh -huh. These are club legends, yeah. but they're still green in managing top clubs. Mm -hmm. So he's doing so well at Rangers, yes, uh, the Scottish league. Uh, just like uh, Frank did well in, with Derby in the championship. Yeah. But uh, maybe we give him another three, four, five years uh, mm -hmm. to be ripe enough for the big stage. Yeah. Just because you're a great player, 
doesn't make you a good coach. You remember mm. what happened to Thierry Henry uh-huh. in, in Monaco? Yes. Yeah. It, it didn't it didn't go too well. Yeah. Uh, and also his colleague uh, Patrick Vieira is, has has never really got top three for yeah. the three seasons he's been at Nice. Yeah. So it, it 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 gives you an understanding that. I think football management is different. Uh, being a head coach of a big club is 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 is, is a different ball game. Yeah, they need to take their time, understand how the the, the situation arises, and maybe, uh, you know, Klopp sometimes gets excited. Maybe yeah. he just wanted to please the fans, and yeah. And yeah. Well, a big one there for Liverpool. But now the big game will be actually on Monday night. That is yes. Manchester United yeah. versus Arsenal. United have only won one once in the last five Premier League matches yeah. and they are going against an Arsenal side that is really confident, that is really coming up. Yeah. How do you think that match will pan out this on Monday? Gonna, this is going to be an interesting match. Uh, uh, um, the rivalry between these two clubs uh, knows no bounds. It's, 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 it's been taken... I think for me it's even surpassed what... Uh, I don't know, maybe somebody can argue others. It surpasses the argument, uh, the, the, the rivalry maybe between... Um, uh, Manu and Liverpool, yeah. which has been going on for years, their neighbors in the same city. Yeah. But Arsenal and Manu, of of the passion, the fans are passionate about football. But yeah. this season, or the past two seasons, they've been really struggling to put things in order. Yeah. Uh, I remember last week, uh, or was it the other week? Yeah, where Manu, Arsenal were really lucky to come back and beat Aston Villa. Yeah, if it wasn't for Aubameyang and Pepe, things mm-hmm. would have been different. Yeah, and 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 Manchester United have suddenly gone blunt. In fact, people are now <laughs> arguing. Yeah, what it was a big mistake to let Lukaku go. Um, a big one, a actually. big mistake because yeah. now the ahead of this match, Rashford is out with a groin injury, mm-hmm. and key players like Lingard are not firing up yet. So it means they'll rely on the young guys like Greenwood, uh, and and, uh, and these are still raw players. Would it be of the analogy that these teams now need to buy time and build a team instead of going out there and buying players to think that if we buy, we'll yeah. have an impact because Manchester goes out there, mm. they buy a player, let's say Guan Bissaka, mm. who is coming in at 70 million, mm. who, is not a, who is not supposed to go for such kinds of amounts of money just because he's coming to Manchester United to go ahead and build a team. Mm. Is that something they should do? Yeah, maybe that's another approach. Though many clubs, because nowadays the because of financial fair play, mm-hmm. and tightening the belts and trying to to give opportunity to the young players. Yeah, you, know, you realize most coaches now uh, uh, are, are giving the young playing time. The, the clear example is Ole. Yes, and now f- uh, and the biggest, of course, example is Frank Lampard giving young players. And then now you want to tighten the belt uh, budget so that you don't spend too much mm-hmm. when you have talent at home. But Again, because Manchester United and Arsenal are, are, are results-driven clubs, they're very impatient fans. Yeah. And uh, the two clubs, it's been a while since they won on the league. Yeah. Um, you know, so definitely they'll want results, quick results. And pressure will be on the boards and pressure will be on the coaches, definitely. Uh, so we expect a very tight match on Monday, yeah. for sure. Then a big one this weekend also is the Madrid derby at the mm. Wenda Metropolitano. Atletico Madrid versus Real Madrid. Yeah. Now, this is the quote from Zinedine Zidane from his press conference. He said that mm-hmm. Real Madrid will always be seen as the rich team and Atletico Madrid as the working class team mm. in the Madrid derby. Yes. Tomorrow, so it will be the rich versus the working class. Mm. How do you think that derby will go? This derby, mm-hmm. by the way, is similar to Manchester United and Manchester City. Manchester City yeah. are considered the noisy neighbours. Yes. Uh, the other guys are considered more affluent. But mm-hmm. uh, listen, when us, uh, the, a derby is a derby. Yeah. And whenever Atletico... In fact, I think the recent statistics, Atletico has usually got a bit of a head. Unless it was the Champions League when Madrid beat them. Mm-hmm. But... Whenever these two giants play, giants from Madrid, it's a classic. Whether it's yeah. Wanda Metropolitano or Santiago Bernabeu, it doesn't yeah. matter wherever it is. Uh, you can be sure. Uh, I think it will be a game of tactics. Uh, Zizou and 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 uh, and uh, Diego Simeone. Simeone. Yeah, these are master masterclass tacticians. So they will they will try and and put their best men to get the points. Uh, I, I, I'm not really sure if uh, Gareth Bell is already fit to come back. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, uh, to me, Madrid is not at the right thing yet at Real Madrid. Atletico lost some key players of Atletico at the back. Uh, Godin left, um, so, but they got Trippier 
from Tottenham. Uh, Costa is back. Uh, so we, we want to see a game of goals. Football is about goals. So yeah. I expect this derby to, to excite us. Yeah. Yeah. And, but again, I think it, will, it can go either way. Yeah. 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 Well, that's where we come to the end of the fun zone here on the touchline. It has been a pleasure hosting you, Barry Sila, Thank you. People Daily Sports Journalist. I'm Robert Osoro. Maxwell Asika will be reporting live from the Kenya School of Monetary Studies on the Kenya Interbanks games that are actually happening there. But from the touchline and everyone who has made this broadcast a success, we say good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your broadcast. <laughs>